a guy sent me an email asking me if I would be showing how to do butt joints. Now understand, this is not regular drywall mud. This is the real Duravon 90 and like I said before in my other videos, if, you, if I don't pre-fill these joints with Duravon 90 and then tape them and top them and skim them according to the USG, USG sheetrock, USG sheetrock, According to their manufacturer ways, I am doing it the way Ray Anderson way, and that's not good. I've got nobody standing behind me. I'm all on my own. Okay? But if I do it the way USG tells me to do it, I've got this entire company, this worldwide company, standing behind me saying, Great job. This is exactly how we say it's supposed to be done. He's doing it exactly the way it's supposed to be done. And I've had them completely pay me to redo two houses because there was a defect in their material. Now, had I not pre-filled it, had I put no pox in my mud or soap, I've watched guys put soap in their mud so it goes really smooth and everything else. Had I done any of that, they would have said, that's your problem. You're paying to have those. I would be paying to have those houses redone again. But they paid me. They paid me to redo them because it was their problem. I had a problem. They fixed it. So I can't do drywall Ray Anderson way. I'm only going to show you the way USG tells me how to do it. And they say I have to put Durabond in the seam. It also says on this bed, I can tape with Durabond. I don't like to because I, I, I like a bazooka. And I'm gonna, this, is, this job is actually even big enough for a bazooka. It's 23, 24 sheets, 12 footers. So it's, it's big enough for a bazooka. So I'm going to run a bazooka. But I'm just going to show you a quick way of doing this seam. Since I have the Durabond here and everything else. I will mud this up. Okay. And then I'll mud up that seam. Now, when I put this up here and take this and then push the mud in, I am pushing this Durabond into the crack and into the seam. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay. So it's all pushed in there now. This is not regular drywall mud. I would never tape this with regular drywall mud without pre-filling it first. Especially with this big window here, being in this bathroom with the humidity changes, that's going to crack. It's going to pop. Something's going to happen to the seam if it's not done in Durban first. So now. I'm just, I'm talking to the novices out there. I'm talking to people who really don't know much about drywall finishing on how to do these butt joints. And you know what? I'm going to do this too right now. Uh, at least most, some of the seam right here. Just because, uh, just because it's easier for me to float into a seam than it is to float into nothing. And I'm going to have to do that anyway. So... So let me, let me do this real quick and, and take this, just this part right here real quick too. So you can see, hey, here's a seam, here's a butt joint. Now, what I would do, if you don't really know that much about taping, is you take your mud, take your mud, and you just run it right down the middle like this, right? And then just so. Just so the tape is covered. You want the tape covered. You don't want to be able to see the tape, right? So if you can just cover that tape, that's all you want to do is cover the tape. You can leave it just like that. Walk away. Walk away, let it dry. You have to have so much mud on top of this tape because if you don't, the primer and the paint can penetrate the mud, can penetrate this tape, can loosen the glue up behind it, and pop this tape loose. So you have to have so much mud on top of the tape to prevent that from happening. So the primer and paint can't get through the mud, through the tape, behind the tape, and pop it loose. So if you're just a novice finisher, you can leave it just like that. You come back when it's completely dry, you scrape this off, and then this is an 8, this is a 10. So I just did this with an 8. Now you go to a 10. And when I go to a 10, when this is dry, 
I'm going to come here on this side, and I'm going to come here on this side, and I'm going to leave about the same amount of mud. I don't need anything here yet. Not this, not the next coat. I can just coat this side, and I can coat this side. And I'll show you what that looks like because that's how I would be doing it as a professional. I would be mudding the seam up. Just I got, I got some scratches in my mud. That I, my Durban got wet in my truck, and I got some uh, some scratches in it. That's why you're seeing some of these scratches. So, as a professional, I would just finish this out all the way out to here just like that to begin with but if you notice again you cannot see my tape I don't have my tape exposed at all it's covered right when I if this was regular mud if I had pre-filled this taped it with tape coated this with topping and this wasn't Durban coated this with topping I would come back here and I would lightly dust this thing off I would skim it tight Probably with a 12 inch knife. I'm going to take a heavy 12 inch knife here. Again, as a novice, you might want to get a 12 inch knife too. Uh, this is a 10, this is a 12, so the 12 is a little bit bigger. Now, with the second coat, you come out past there just a little bit and you pull it tight, very tight. Then it's ready to sand. It's ready to sand and then it's ready to paint. So, it's a really simple way of doing butt joints. All right, so somebody wanted me to know, important, make sure it's flat. This is nice and flat. If you notice, you can see my, my knife marks here and here. When I was coating this in, I took my knife at the very end and ran right down the center and made sure this was flat. Because if this is not flat, if this is crowned, if it's, if it's offset, if, if this is not flat right here, every time light comes down here, you're going to see this big crown. And then you got to float it out, float it out, float it out. So you always want to make sure that is flat. Then you can float out from there. So as a novice, flatten this out, float it out. Otherwise, as a professional, that actually looks really good. I like the looks of that butt joint right now. So that's going to be an easy thing to fix. All right, you guys have a good day. Oh, oh wait, one more thing. I stopped using a 10 probably 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, when they came out with plus three. I stopped using a 12 inch knife. There's nothing that I cannot finish with a 10 inch knife. Sometimes I have to do a couple of two or three tens to fill it up. But there's nothing that I cannot do with a 10 inch knife. I don't usually use anything bigger than a 10. So, and, uh, so you have a great day. I want to thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's educational. I hope you've learned something. Uh, so if you really like what you see, please subscribe.